Welcome to episode 5 of Mrs B the Knitter podcast. My name is Sarah, you can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as Mrs B the Knitter. And if you'd like to join the Ravelry group, pop along onto Ravelry into the group section and in the search box if you type in Mrs B's podcast you'll find the group. Please do come along and join us, it would be lovely to chat with you. Um, so if you're new to the podcast, thank you so much for coming along and giving it a try. And if you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back. Um, I've been really chuffed, <laughs> really pleased um, that so many of you seem to be enjoying it. Um, and there are a couple of people I would like to say hello to. Um, so today is the 9th of March, it's Wednesday, and it's my mother-in-law's birthday. So hello and happy birthday. Um, also Christine, um, who sent me some lovely messages um, on Instagram. Uh, thank you so much for saying all those lovely things about the podcast. Um, that, that's just, yeah, so lovely of you. Thank you so much. Um, and I'm glad you're enjoying them. So um, I've been catching up with um, some podcasts. I've been catching up um, with Mina Phillips, um, her Knitting Expat podcast, and Molly from A Homespun House. Um, I routinely watch Little Bobbins, which is Danny, um, Fluffy Fibres, um, who's Isabel, and Molly and Mina. But I've recently found two new podcasts that I really enjoy. Inside Number 23 with Katie, um, who's here in the UK, and Junk Yarn Podcast with Kemper, who is over in the US. And I've just recently discovered those podcasts, and I'm really enjoying them. Um, one thing I do like about them uh, that a lot of the podcasts have in common is that we all seem to be within the fibre community a big fan of warm drinks um, be it tea, be it coffee uh, and I love that because there have been a few teas mentioned that I've now gone out and tried and I love them, really really enjoy them <coughs> sorry, still got a little bit of a tickle from when I was poorly um, and I drink a lot of tea and I thought uh, there might be some teas that I drink that maybe um, you guys would like to hear about. So um, in my mug today, my lovely star mug, um, I have my leaf strainer, um, which has a little stand that it can stand on, but I just leave it in my mug um, because I don't drink a lot of black teas or very strong teas, um, and I don't mind if they slightly overbrew. So um, I leave it in my mug. I'm going to have a little sip now just to clear that tickle. Hello, Miss Hattie. And in there today, I have Formosa. I I think it's Formosa, because it's only one O, Formosa Oolong Choice from All About Tea in Portsmouth, which is a lovely tea import-export blending company. And they also have a tea shop within their tea factory, and um, they do fantastic cream teas and chocolate cream tea where instead of a scone and clotted cream and jam you get a gluten-free brownie with clotted cream and raspberries uh, along with your pot of tea and it's lovely and it's a lovely atmosphere um, lovely comfy armchairs to sit in candles on the table and you're just surrounded by this beautiful smell of all these different tea blends so if you happen to be in the Portsmouth area all about tea do go and check them out because they are fantastic. So, on to a little bit of knitting. Uh, I don't know how Hattie's going to feel about the knitting kind of floating over her head, so we will see. Um, the first thing I have to show you um, is actually a work in progress where progress has been made. <gasps> Shock horror! Um, my knitting mojo that disappeared in February um, when I was poorly has gone back again. Um, so it's in my knit and stitch bits bag. I have both the medium and uh, small size of this bag and it's Katie Knit and Stitch Bits based in Australia um, but has really good worldwide shipping rates and I just love her bags, absolutely love them. Attached on this is a key ring I got from Rosie's Moments on Etsy uh, that says how to do a kitchen stitch. So can you guess what is in the bag? Ta-da! my mermaid princess socks these are for my best friend for her birthday in april and 
they have heels, we've got past the heels. <sighs> Fantastic. Um, the last time I showed these to you, they were literally a cuff and a little bit of leg. I've done a fish lips kiss heel um, because I haven't taken measurements on my best friend's feet. Um, the fish lips kiss heel pretty much fits everyone perfectly so it was a really good bet and also doing two at a time they're pretty easy it means i don't have to take these off the needles do my heel flap and everything and then kind of put them back on so very easy to do fish lip kiss heel two at a time i've taken the pattern down the leg and then faded it out across the foot so um just now faded it down to plain stockinette um this is because when I was knitting up the back of the sock, um, so I stopped the pattern about an inch before the heel on the back of the sock, um, I just loved how this knit up with a plain stockinette and I thought I wasn't sure about carrying the pattern down the foot anyway because it's quite a dense fabric, I'm a tight knitter so this is quite a dense fabric um, and I thought probably the stockinette would feel nicer um, against Kerry's skin under her shoes. This is the Blink colorway by Truly Hooked on Etsy and it's a lovely um, pink and turquoise sparkle sock yarn. Knitting these on higher higher sharps, fixed circulars, uh, 2.5. I believe higher higher have just bought out um, an interchangeable sock set um, with everything I think from 2mm to 2.75mm on interchangeables. Uh, which would be very funky and cool but I tend to only really use 2.5 and 2.75 because I'm such a tight knitter if I use anything smaller it becomes slightly ridiculous and my stitch count goes through the roof um, so these are a 64 stitch count um, <laughs> gonna get my yarn all tangled as I put them back in um, so that is work in progress number one um, work in progress number two is a brand new work in progress. As I mentioned earlier, I've been watching Inside Number 23, um, the podcast by Katie, and she is having a Harry Potter knit along. Um, and I am joining in knitting a shawl, and the pattern is The Love of Spiders, um, available on Ravelry. I've just started it. Um, so it's a two colour shawl. <coughs> The pattern was originally inspired by Charlotte's Web and the friendship between Wilbur the Pig and Charlotte the Spider. Um, but I, I wrote to Katie and said, I, I think this shawl is Harry Potter themed because my favourite character, well not my favourite character, but one of my favourite characters is Hagrid. And for those of you who've read the book or seen the film, you will know that one of Hagrid's friends is a massive, giant, hairy spider called Aragog. And Hagrid is completely soft and sappy over the spider and I just love that um, I love the fact that you know all these magical creatures that burp slime and breathe fire and everyone else is like oh they're hideous and awful that Hagrid is just soft and soppy for them and I love that and I also think that um, especially in the films Hagrid is a very understated character he's actually if you when you're reading through the books and if you watch the films carefully there are a couple of bits where if Hagrid hadn't have been there doing what he was doing life would have been a lot more difficult for um, some of the more main characters um, so I really like Hagrid I love that one of his best friends is a spider despite the fact that I don't like spiders um, so I'm knitting the love of spiders shawl pattern in honor of Hagrid and his friend Aragog um, I am knitting that in two colourways from Felt Fusion. Uh, the first one is the black tonal colour which is on a sparkle sock base and it's called Deep Space and the second is again on a sparkle um, sock base and it's called Shot Through the Heart and it's got these lovely pinks, reds, white, a little bit of grey flecks in there um, and I think the two complement each other really nicely. I had thought about using Shot Through the Heart as the main colour with the black being kind of the um, the accent colour but I much prefer it this way around. I had a little play around with the yarn and I thought no I want I want the black as the main colour with that, that secondary colour being the variegated. And I think also 
sticking on the Harry Potter theme, that the Enchanted Forest, um, where Hagrid is obviously the gamekeeper of the, the Enchanted Forest, it is very dark, people are warned about going into it, but there are these beautiful kind of flecks of light in there, um, unicorns live in there, the centaurs live in there. Um, I think the Thestrals are, you know, not hideous, I think they're pretty cool. Um, and um, I especially liked their portrayal in the in the film, um, especially when the bats come out. Oh no, that wasn't that was the hippogriff. Um, the hippogriff, they lived in the forest as well. Um, yeah, so lots of nice things live in the the dark enchanted forest with these flecks of light. So um, I think that works really nicely, and it's sparkly, um, which obviously Harry Potter is full of magic and and sparkle. So that is a brand new work in progress and then my final work in progress to show you if you watched the last episode i showed you my dr zeus themed box from um, felt fusion and one of the skeins in there was this beautiful single ply superwash merino fingering weight called truffula um, and truffler, I have found out because I googled it, um, are the trees that grow in Horton Here's a Who and they have stripy bark and on the top they grow these fluffy pom-poms and the fluffy pom-poms are harvested to make fibre which are then knit into sweater type jumpers, sweater type garments um, that are called sneeds and um, when I showed you the skein, I said, I think this needs to become a baby jumper or a baby cardigan. Um, that's what I feel it wants to be. Um, and all my friends are having boys. And I would have no problem with a boy wearing these colours at all. Um, but I know that traditionally people wouldn't necessarily think to put a boy in this colour. And all my friends are having boy babies, which is lovely. Um, and we really don't mind people having boy babies, not a problem at all. Um, but I desperately wanted to knit uh, a baby cardigan out of this colourway. Um, but I didn't feel I could do that if I had no baby to knit it for. And then my friend who um, is expecting, who I started the, the ripple blanket, which I showed you last time, which I've done no work on, sorry. Um, she announced that um, everything was going really well with her pregnancy, baby was healthy, and it was a girl. Um, so I've been, I have no problem making things for boys. I'm making things, uh, a friend of mine has just had a boy and I'm about to start making her something for her little boy. Um, I showed you the crochet um, little boots that I made for my friend's boy who's due later in the year. Um, it just seems to be there's a lot of boys happening this year. And so my friend, when she said she's having a little girl, said I've got the perfect skein of yarn to make a little something for your little girl. Can I start knitting now that you say that everything's okay? She said yes. So I started knitting. So this is... Uh, the baby vertebrae pattern by Kelly Brooker on um, Ravelry and it's just so cute just so cute um, I love how the colours are knitting up and I just love how soft this is it's just so soft and scrummy at some point I think I want to make myself something out of a superwash merino single ply because this is just so soft and scrummy um, but I thought these colours would actually be perfect for um, not only for my friend's baby but also for my friend because she is um, very, very vibrant. Um, she's one of those people that just goes at life full pelt, which just, I, I love her attitude to things. And she's also the friend who taught me how to knit in the round, reintroduced me to knitting after, you know, I learned as a child and then completely forgot about it. and loaned me the first ever pair of circular needles that I used. Um, she also opened up my eyes to fibre in general. I hadn't really cottoned on to you. you could make your own fibre. It was kind of, um, you could make your own yarn and you could buy fibre. And so she's a very special person to me. And um, I hope she likes this when it's finished. But, um, oh, it's just so cute. And I think, yeah, 
and I'm loving knitting on this. I'm knitting this on my higher higher interchangeables 3.25 and just to make it that little bit extra special it is being housed in a very special project bag. My mum made this project bag for me and for those of you who watched my uh, after Christmas episode it matches the needle ca case that she uh, she made for me, which is now full of all my fixed circular needles, all my DPNs, and all my crochet hooks. So I may have to very kindly ask my mum to make me another one uh, because it is super duper full. So I have a little matching set from my mum, and the details that she's put on this. At the end of the zip, there's a little daisy flower, and at the end of the zip on the other end, there's a little daisy flower. And bless her heart, she came to visit in the week before Mothering Sunday and she <laughs> gave me this wrapped up with a little note that said, Happy Mother's Day, without you I wouldn't be a mum, so thank you for being my daughter. <laughs> so lovely, my mum is just so lovely. Um, so yeah, special little project bag there. And she has said that there is more of this fabric left over and would I like a bigger bag? And I think I'm going to have to say, well, yes, because then I can have a, a complete set of three. Um, so that's very... I love my mum, bless her. Um, she is one of the kindest, most patient, giving people that I have ever met. Um, and I love... That's the fact that she, she... This is not the first time I've had a mothering day present, a mothering Sunday day present from my mum. Um, she doesn't do it every year but every now and again she'll she'll give me a little present on Mother's Day to say thank you for being my daughter so that I can be a mother which is just lovely, very very sweet. <coughs> so on to um, a little bit of um, spinning. So some works in progress for spinning. Uh, I'm calling them works in progress because they're not yet finished. They haven't had a bath, they, the twist hasn't been set. This is the first ever, ever yarn that I spun on my spinning wheel. It is Grey Corriedale from um, Fondant Fibre. And it's not too bad, but it's not brilliant. But it was my first try, so I don't mind. I really don't mind that it's not perfect. I'm going to leave this as a single ply. And I will probably knit something like a little toy or something like that out of it. I don't really think it's fit for any other sort of purpose. If you look, I've over twisted bits, got really, really thin bits, got really, really thick bits with barely any twist in it. This is just going to be made into something that will remind me that this was my first hand spun and um, I'm pretty proud of it. So. Uh, my first hand spun on my wheel. Obviously, I've spun things on drop spindles before. This is also awaiting a bath. These were the second and third things that I spun on my wheel. And I then plied them together, which is the first time I've ever plied anything. Um, and it's come out pretty well. This is um, from Hilltop Cloud. It was the two braids of British wool from my Hilltop Cloud Learn to Spin on a Drop Spindle kit. Um, lovely grey and the other one is kind of burnt orange with bits, flecks of yellow and flecks of red in. Again, we've got everything from, you know, thin, I would say sport weight, right up through to easily <laughs> bulky or chunky. Um, I don't mind. I'm just going to make something pretty out of it, but that is waiting for my Niddy Noddy to arrive so it can be put into a skein and then bathed um, to just finish that one off. I'm currently spinning up this beautiful black Welsh mountain. Um, it was a braid, it's now not a braid. Um, black Welsh mountain fleece, and it's from. Um, so there's its label, Black Welsh Mountain, from whoop, fondant fibre. Um, and it's spinning up pretty nicely. I am just going to very quickly, I have a little hattie on my lap, and I think this might disturb us. But I'm just going to turn, there is my spinning wheel. 
so up here you can't see it because I've got it the wrong way around let me see if I can turn it uh, there we go so I'm spinning up with the Welsh um, black mountain that's coming out pretty nicely I'm getting a fairly consistent spin on that and I, I'm pretty happy with that um, on my wheel I did buy an Ashford maintenance kit and I replaced the scotch tension brake band um, which I didn't have one when I bought it I've also replaced the drive band and I've replaced the leather bit that's down on the bottom that connects the the treadle to the rest of the wheel um, it also the maintenance kit came with the threading hook which is very useful um, because this spinning wheel didn't come with one and on a little bit of hand spun I've just attached um, the little tool from Hilltop Cloud that tells you how thick your yarn is so so what it would be classified as which is very very helpful my spinning wheel was being sold off as an ex pantomime prop so it'd been used in a production of Sleeping Beauty on the description it said um, on the description it just said we're not spinners we think it works when you press the pedal the wheel spins um, it came with four bobbins and a lazy kate it also came with some carders the, the kind of brush type things <coughs> I still don't know all my terms I'm very sorry um, and all I've done basically is cleaned it bought a um, Ashford maintenance kit for it and replaced a couple of bits and I bought a new bobbin for it as well um, gotta love eBay you've really gotta love eBay um, because you know looking at various kind of spinning wheels they they easily go for 150 upwards in terms of cost looking at brand new spinning wheels you're looking from you know 250 to 450 pounds and um i managed to snag this one for less than 100 um so the total cost with the new bobbin and um the maintenance kit uh, and everything has come to less than most second hand wheels which I'm very appreciative of. It does have a few paint spots on it, so someone has obviously either been painting sets or painting a wall or something and just kind of dropped magnolia paint onto it. But I don't really mind. It's clean, it works. Um, and thank you so much to the Hilltop Cloud Ravelry group, especially Katie, um, who runs Hilltop Cloud, and Anne, um, but everyone who participated. When I posted questions about my spinning wheel, they were so helpful and so lovely. And basically without them, I think I'd still be staring at a beautiful spinning wheel going, ah, I don't know how to get this thing working. Um, so thank you very much to them. On to some finished objects. These are my simple house slippers. The pattern is by Temple Knits. It's free on Ravelry. And I had hibernated these. And then I got my mojo back. So I finished them. They're very, very comfortable. I knit some extra garter stitch because I wanted a slightly larger opening at the to get my fit into. And then knit the rest of the pattern as per the pattern they're very very comfortable I have blocked them and I've just ever so lightly felted the bottom of them they are knit out of blacker yarns Zwarbitals I think is how you pronounce it the double knit weights and it's pure Zwarbitals and I really hope I'm saying that properly because I feel so silly um, so it, it's a little bit coarse um, but ideal for slippers and they're just they're so warm and they're so comfy so I'm really glad I finished those and I will be making some more uh, be warned people uh, if you are in my family Christmas me thinks that everyone's getting slippers this year um, the other finished object that I have to show you is the one that I am wearing so um, this is the Starman shawl um, by the wall kitchen um, it is knit out of the other skein from my dr zeus box from felt fusion fun that is funny and if you remember when i first showed you that skein i said i don't know what to do with it i'd want to knit something for simon out of it but it's sparkly and he doesn't wear hand knit 
And I was just kind of having one of those days where I was just browsing on Ravelry and Instagram and I saw Helen's picture of her Starman shawl that she'd knit out of um, the Ziggy colourway, which is one of the main colourways from the wool kitchen and is absolutely gorgeous. Um, and I suddenly thought, bold colours, sparkly yarn, Starman, this lovely star stitch. It was just meant to be, absolutely meant to be. And I think I knit this in like four days, which for me is really super quick. I am not a quick knitter. I'm a very slow knitter. Um, I pick things up, I put things down. Um, I'm also physically slow at knitting. I don't knit very fast. Um, but yeah, this knit up really quickly and it was just beautiful. It blocked out nicely, but I do think I need to re-block it because there is a little bit of curling going on along this edge um, and I wear it as a little kind of scarf et type thing um, so I kind of tuck the ends up keep my neck nice and warm and I just love it I think it's come out really really nicely um, and it's kind of got me obsessed with shawls hence why I now have the love of spiders cast on um, I suddenly started I, I've made the curious handmade um, summer tide mystery knit along shawl um, way back and never worn it and then I suddenly started I was like why am I not wearing this this is this is bonkers um, it's really pretty I made it I should wear it and I started wearing it and suddenly went I want some more things that I can wear like that so Starman and um, hopefully fairly soon the love of spiders so that's it for finished objects um i do have a couple of new things to show you so last time i mentioned i'd order myself a birthday flowers box from Korutumi on etsy um i've been so good it arrived on the 29th of february ready for the first of march this is the Mer the, the march birthday box my birthday is not until the end of march and it's still in its packaging. We're nine days into March and it's still in its packaging. <laughs> um, so um, that's really good for me um, that I haven't just opened it up. Um, I am, I'm leaving this till my birthday. I'm going to open this on my birthday. So technically it's a new thing, but it's kind of not yet a new thing because I haven't yet opened it. So I can't show you what's in it. <coughs> But last month I also ordered myself a the next yarn box from Felt Fusion because I just love her stuff. Um, I now have a hattie back on my lap uh, and she's now investigating the box. Um, and I've never ordered mini skeins before but um, Shadow who runs Felt Fusion was doing a rainbow mini skein box and I love rainbows. And I thought I've never had mini skeins before. This would be a perfect way to dry mini skeins and um, also to have some rainbow stuff. Uh, so I opted for the variegated option. And look, 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 how gorgeous are they? Oh my gosh, even Hattie says they're gorgeous. Um, absolutely just lovely. This is on her um, Seaport Merino and Nylon sock base. Um, I think my favorites are this one in the middle here which is a lovely kind of sherbet color and this one which is white with these lovely neon pops of color so we've got a white one with neon we've got a gray one um, here which is a very light gray with um, rainbow stripes we've got a darker rainbow and what i would call a kind of a primary colors rainbow kind of a crayon rainbow and then this lovely one which is more neon-y um, and then the little sherbet one at the back um, I don't yet know what I'm going to turn them into I, I quite like everyone's cosy memories blankets um, I quite like the crocheted weekender blanket so I might split them in half and do one of each but I'm thinking maybe scrappy rainbow socks I think that could be quite nice um, there's a hundred grams there. I could make a, a good pair of socks out of that. Um, so I don't know yet. At the moment, I'm just squishing them and loving them and petting them 
because they're just so cute so darn cute um in the box with them there was a lovely rainbow sticker which has been um stuck into my knitting journal along with the dr zeus um sticker that came last time um but there's also magnetic rainbow pegs so these will be making their way onto the fridge to hold onto the postcards and the such like some lovely rainbow buttons and a unicorn chocolate lollipop with hundreds and thousands stuck in the side here lovely 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 you may notice there's been a little bit of unicorn sabotage that was my husband lesson learned don't allow my husband to inspect yarn box contents unless i am holding on to said yarn box because he will sabotage your beautiful unicorn <coughs> so that's it for um my knitting and spinning um one thing i did want to finish up with is um this podcast for me is all about enjoyment all about um fun uh, something that's just for me, just for fun, uh, something to share kind of with anyone who would um, like to share it with me. And um, I would like at the end of each podcast to just add in something that I enjoy, that's fun for me, um, that I can share with you. And it may be something that you then go and try or have a look at and you might enjoy it. So this week, um, I want to talk about books and yesterday was International Women's Day and I have some favourite female characters and favourite female authors that I would like to share with you. Um, the first one, Terry Pratchett, obviously not a woman, um, and this is called The We Free Men, but this is actually the first book in a series um, within a series, so his Discworld series is really famous. Um, within that series you've got the witches so weird sisters and things like that um, this is the first book of the Tiffany Aching series and Tiffany Aching is a very young girl who is a witch who doesn't realize she's a witch and her brother gets kidnapped by the queen of the fairies um, and fairies are not twinkly sparkly things that uh, we think of it's a hilarious book these little guys the Nakmak Feagles just crack me up they are so funny um and i love tiffany aching i think she's a fantastic heroine i haven't read many discworld novels um but i have read all the tiffany aching novels and i really enjoy them tiffany's a fantastic character um a brilliant heroine and um so yeah so that one's good fun <coughs> one of my favorite female authors is philippa gregory um, she writes historical fiction um, a lot of um, her books there's two series the the cousins war series and the Tudor series that are kind of based around um, the Tudor series is based around Henry VIII which this is one of those the other Berlin girl um, and the the cousins war is set pre Henry VIII it's kind of um, his ancestors and what I love about Philippa Gregory is um, a lot of her main characters are the women and it's it's realistic to history whilst actually you know a lot of portrayals about the women of this time is that they were a bit wet whereas actually just had to take a little bit of a break there the doorbell went um so just had to go see who was at the door so um i was talking about this book and um, I like Philippa Gregory because she actually writes historical women as actual women and not just kind of bystanders, bystanders of history. So uh, really enjoyed that one. A couple of what I would call classics um, that I think everyone should have read at some point. Alain Montgomery's Anne of Green Gables. The first book, um, I think the first kind of grown up book that I was read as a child um, before I could read myself I knew about Anne of Green Gables and I loved the stories there are seven books in the Anne of Green Gables series love Anne with her red plaits who is just completely comfortable being herself lovely um, 
and this. Michelle Magorian is really well known for Goodnight Mr. Tom, which here in the UK, certainly when I was at school, was a book that every child read on the national curriculum. Um, Goodnight Mr. Tom is a Second World War story, um, absolutely lovely, uh, very heartwarming. If you haven't read it, I do recommend you do. Um, but this is another one of her books, A Little Love Song, again set in the Second World War, set in 1943. Um, <clears throat> and I just love it. The main character, Rose, is really about her coming into herself as, as a young woman, um, knowing her own mind and having the confidence to stand up for that. And it's also got a beautiful love story in it that uh, I just love. I absolutely love. Um, it's one of my favourites to go back to when I just want a little something to kind of cheer me up and a quick read as well. This is quite a quick read for me. Um, it's just lovely. Absolutely lovely. Then the last two bits. Tamora Pierce. Tamora Pierce is one of my favourite authors. I started reading her when I was a teenager and um, I love all her books. My favourite series um, is the Immortal series, and this is the first book, Wild Magic. Um, she writes fantastic characters, male, female, uh, immortal, gods, you know, they are all brilliant characters. And I really love that mainly she writes heroines, so most of her main characters are female. And they're just brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Some of them are princesses, some of them are queens, um, some of them are warriors, some of them are just regular normal people, some of them are magic, some of them aren't magic. Um, but they're all very real and relatable. And I, what I really enjoy about her characters is especially when she's writing, you know, princesses and queens, like they're real people, they're rounded people, they're not just their title um, and I think that that's something that having three goddaughters and seeing them grow up um, I think is important um, that they learn that they don't have to just be a princess there are other options for them and I, I love her books um, on a still magical theme how could I mention female authors um, and characters without mentioning the Harry Potter series by J.K. Rowling. Um, oh, who doesn't love Harry Potter? I love Harry Potter. Um, this is the final book, Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows. I find that my favourite books are books five and six, so Order of the Phoenix and The Half-Blood Prince. I know that The Order of the Phoenix wasn't necessarily the most popular book in the series but I like it because it's the book where everything shifts so books one to four we've kind of been having adventures and it's all magical and yes there's been danger and there's been very real possibility of everyone dying um, and obviously there's Lord Voldemort and you know it, it's dark and scary but for me book five is really the point where Harry, Ron and Hermione and their friends really transition into a slightly more grown-up um, perspective on the world and I think it's handled really nicely and done really well um, and you also learn a bit more background about all the different characters which I really like. Um, I also like the films but I think book four um, <clears throat> was the first thick book and there were elements missed out in the film that at kind of film four and book four is where the two paths kind of diverged and yes the films are still fantastic and I still really enjoy them but the books are always going to be my favourite and I think JK Rowling is superbly talented so um yay so that's really um it from me I just I thought I'd share something with you that I really enjoy um that you might think, oh, I'll go and have a look at that book or have a look at that author. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, I'm going to try to film every couple of weeks, which, as a slow knitter, gives me time to actually finish things to show you. But before I go, the doorbell rang. I had to run away. Um, and it was the postman. He was delivering this lovely box. And in this lovely box, haven't opened it yet, but since we're here, I shall open it with my 
I have children's scissors <laughs> because I can't I kept lose I had a really nice pair of proper kind of crafty thread scissors and I lost them and um, I wasn't about to spend lots and lots of money when all I do is pretty much cut yarn with them um, and open boxes and uh, so I went and bought myself some kitty scissors um, in this box exciting exciting I said I was waiting for it to arrive earlier so in this box through loads of wrapping which Hattie's going to love we can turn this into a, a game for Hattie later on is when I can get to it oh hopefully yay my niddy noddy in three pieces from Wood Beach on Etsy um, this is uh, he's a wood turner in um, in Wales I believe he's Hilltop Clouds dad um, and this is local ash so this is local to, to him and um, comes in three pieces I have a niddy noddy eee! I can go and wind my skeins and um, soak my hands bun Woo so I can show them to you next time um, fantastic I just thought I'd open it while we were here so thank you very much for um, coming along and watching the podcast I hope you've enjoyed it and I will see you next time bye